What is up, guys, and welcome back to the Superhero Buzz, where we talk all things Marvel. And today, I'm with my very good friend Terrence, also known as Comic Break 98. Terrence, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, what's going on, guys? So, as Noah said, I'm Terrence. You can also call me Comic Break 98. So, I guess I should talk about what I'm doing right now. So, I'm basically an artist. I'm a filmmaker. Uh, currently, right now, I don't know if any of you guys are from the St. Louis area, but I currently have an art show going on right now. It's called Overlook, and it's at the Framations Gallery in St. Charles, and it's going to be up until June 3rd. And I have a digital comic there that I actually printed out and made into an actual comic. And it's called Helen Back. It's about a man who wakes up on Christmas Eve, but he doesn't know that the apocalypse is taking place. So if you guys want to see the comic, so after June 3rd, I'm going to be probably, because I'm going to sell them first, got to make some money. But uh, I'm going to be putting them on my website at TerrenceWellmakerStorytelling.com. So yeah, if you guys want to go over there and subscribe, go ahead and do that. Listen, everybody, and I mean this, go subscribe to his channel. This man is making so much original, authentic, amazing work. And if you really appreciate that kind of stuff, you will not regret subscribing to him this fans go on places thanks man i appreciate it let's first talk about the multiverse of madness i know you've seen it actually more than i have but we definitely have talked about it a little bit and we have quite a few things to say about it so i'll let you start out what was your initial reaction to the multiverse of madness so uh, when i first went to see dr strange 2 i had two expectations i was like i just want to see really crazy visuals you know like the magic and the multiverse i was expecting to see some really crazy stuff and i also wanted to see some really huge surprises <laughs> And I'm so glad that I stayed on social media until I saw the movie because we, we can talk spoilers, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's fair game at this point. If, if people haven't seen it yet, that's kind of on them. Mr. Fantastic. When I saw John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic, I lost my mind. But even more so than him, Black Gagar Boltagon, when they put like they, they still care about the Inhumans. And it's like and he was awesome, even though. He died like three minutes later. I was like, I was man. Blown. Oh man, I got some choice words about, about all of their fates. Yeah. It was so cool seeing John Krasinski as Reed Richards. I mean, that's honestly been a fan casting along with him and his wife Emily Blunt becoming, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Fantastic at some point. Which I still think that's, you know, we'll get to that later. But I still think that there's a chance they're going to be the actual. 616 Reed Richards and Sue Storm. But I think this it could have been Marvel just kind of teasing us, testing the waters a little bit. But yeah, I mean, just seeing Black Bolt back for the first time. I mean, I know the Inhumans didn't get the best reviews and, you know, fan reception from that TV show, but still, it was so cool. I mean, he had the full suit and like the comic book accurate suit. You know, I feel like they're gonna maybe do something with the Inhumans down the road and like maybe add them in a project or whatnot and maybe just bring or do a soft reboot of the Inhumans. But I'm not 100% sure yet. I think hopefully we see, this won't be the last time we see Black Bolt in the MCU. Yeah, I definitely hope the same. And I think that now that we're seeing Black Bolt, especially now that Ms. Marvel is coming into the fray, I actually think that she might be an Inhuman and especially with John Krasinski coming as Reed Richards and the Fantastic four movie coming the next year i think there's going to be some kind of fantastic four inhuman x-men saga coming up because like, like in the fantastic four movie i really think that they're going to adapt the jonathan hickman annihilation when a uh, annihilist basically suppose if you haven't read that comic it came out in like 2007 <laughs> but when johnny storm died and then he came back and was on the inhumans now they have the inhumans back Definitely. I think that is a strong possibility. And I honestly, you know, ever since John Watts uh, left the project, you know, he was initially signed on to direct the movie. Ever since he signed off, I feel like maybe John Krasinski could maybe even direct or produce or have some kind of creative role in the Fantastic Four movie. I heard that too. And uh, I also heard that Bryce Dallas Howard was in talks to direct it as well. I have not heard that, but that should be really interesting. That's really cool. But yeah, it's going to be incredible seeing Marvel's first family finally make their MCU debut. I'm really excited to see who they cast, you know, for, you know, the Human Torch and the thing. They might just give us some curveball castings. I mean, I don't I don't know. I mean, like, but definitely intuition tells me it's going to be John Krasinski and his wife, Emily Blunt, and Mr. and Mrs. Richards, in my opinion. So do you think that we're going to ever see the Illuminati again after the Multiverse of Madness, a different version? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Um, I think it's definitely open just because we've played with the multiverse now. So like every concept we've seen that comes out of the multiverse, it can kind of just go back and say that this is another version of something that could exist in our universe. But uh, I don't know how that would manifest uh, if the Illuminati were to return. Like, would they have their own movie or would they show up again? I feel like at this point, since, they, since they've shown up as kind of like a not a cameo, but, you know, a small role in Doctor Strange, I feel like the only next step is for them to have their own film. So, yeah, I think they're film would be 
really good or their own, you know, potentially their own series. I mean, there's even been rumors of uh, Captain Carter getting her own Disney Plus series with the live action actress. And I think that that should be really interesting. I don't know how they're going to pull that off because, you know, technically, spoiler alert, guys, she died. But with the Captain Carter series, they can do so much stuff with the multiverse. I truly believe this is the multiverse saga. I mean, the last saga was the Infinity Saga. And I feel like, you know, there's just so much emphasis on the multiverse. And now one thing that I thought was a little bit frustrating is how they killed off Charles Xavier yet again. I mean, I feel like he didn't serve much of a purpose in the movie except just for the fans got excited and it was really cool to see him. He really didn't serve that much of a, you know, heavy role in the movie. I mean, he died fairly quickly after he was, you know, introduced. I think that the Scarlet Witch could have eventually defeated the entire Illuminati, but how she just like just snapped his neck in the in the mindscape that's like where he is like untouchable basically i feel like there should have at least been some kind of you know some larger fight i feel like that was one of the problems that i have with the film i felt like every fight scene it wasn't like it, it wasn't like a fake out and with them cutting like 40 minutes of footage i feel like they weren't like you know really focused on those action scenes as much I think, so i think that is that's what's kind of lacking for me i do definitely agree with that the the film obviously not perfect interestingly enough there's been a rumor that over 40 minutes of footage was actually cut from the final version so maybe that could explain some of the continuity errors maybe or some of the stuff that may be in the gray area that didn't make too much sense. But I think a lot of people were kind of disappointed because there were so many reports and rumors about various cameos happening. And even the Deadpool creator, Rob Lightfield, he insinuated that Deadpool was going to be in the movie. And, you know, and a lot of other insiders and, you know, scoopers, you, know, you got to take scoopers to the great and solid. But they, a lot of people reported, like very credible ones that have a pretty good track record, have said Deadpool was going to be in the movie, potentially Toby. I know you've probably heard all sorts of rumors about, you know, even Ghost Rider was rumored to appear in the film at some point. Were you disappointed you didn't see any of those cameos that so many people were anticipating? I will say when I saw the Illuminati, I was kind of disappointed because for the most part, the team was comic book accurate, you know, like Mr. Fantastic, Professor Xavier, Doctor Strange, and still Black Bolt, which is still crazy to me. Uh, but I was going in expecting to see that Tom Cruise Iron Man. Or oh, another, man. I, oh or another variant of Black Panther, man. I was just like, where? Where's Tom Cruise? I was waiting. And they had the Ultron bots, too. So I was like, you like, know. Literally, the writing was on the wall for Superior Iron Man to make his debut in that movie. They said, oh, Tom Cruise. Um, I think the writer of the movie, was. they talked about the interest of having Tom Cruise play that very environment. But they said, oh, he was filming Top Gun at that point in time. And there wasn't like he really didn't have much time. I highly doubt that. I feel like, honestly, he was maybe pulled from the movie to save him for an even bigger role. Because the post credits kind of in te you know kind of tease Secret Wars with the incursion aspect, but I mean that's a whole nother ball game. I feel like maybe a lot of those cameos, such as Deadpool and Toby, and you know obviously Tom Cruise Iron Man, maybe they're actually saving those characters intentionally for Secret Wars. Yeah, like the Hugh Jackman Wolverine, like you know, like the Wesley Snipes Blade. I think that's going to be like when we're going to really see them open up the multiverse, and then you know more crazier. Uh, variations of characters like Tom Cruise, Iron Man. I think all of them are being held for Secret Wars, but I actually think that we might, we may see Deadpool earlier. Uh, I think Secret Wars is still a ways off. Secret Wars, so many people are excited about it. And like there have been reports that are already in the early stages, like, you know, writing the story and whatnot. But like that, a story with that much substance takes some time to build up with it. And like, you know, you got to have a lot more characters and a lot more, you know, plot aspects established before you can even go into the Secret Wars. I definitely think that's where the MCU is heading. Once Secret Wars happens, it's going to be a field day when it comes to cameos. Oh, stuff yeah. Like that. It's going to go in game out of the water, I feel. Oh, this. without a doubt. Yeah. It'd be interesting if the Rooster Brothers came back to have some role in it. Yeah, I think uh, around when Endgame was having its run, like through all the press and whatnot, I think that the Rooster Brothers came out and said that they would want to come back to direct either Secret Wars or the X-Men film, so. Even Wolverine, I think what's, one of them mentioned Wolverine in specific. Yeah, so they said uh, if they were able to use the X-Men in Avengers Endgame, they would snap the entire X-Men team besides Wolverine. But, you know, Wolverine is just the most notable. I mean, when it comes to all of the X-Men, they're definitely going to do something with Wolverine down the road. Definitely think we will see Hugh Jackman at some point. I think he will return. I know they're working on X-Men 97. I feel like Kevin Feige, with the upcoming Mutants project he teased a couple years back, 
we're going to get the MCU X-Men. And I'm really excited to see what they do with that. Thinking about how we saw Professor Xavier in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness when he comes out in the yellow hover chair with the green suit, like the X-Men theme song, and then them doing X-Men 97, these 10 extra episodes. At first, before all this stuff was happening, I was thinking like, yeah, it's going to be an original version or like, you know, the MCU version of the X-Men. But I really feel like pull the X-Men from the X-Men 97 TV series, since we're in the multiverse, the theme is the multiverse, they're going to use with these 10 episodes in X-Men 97, they're going to use that to roll the X-Men from the animated series over into the MCU proper. It's like it'll be a seamless transition between, you know, the stuff that we love, that those legacy characters into, you know, the now. And then we'll see. That is what I'm super excited to see. I'm excited to see those X-Men costumes, that Wolverine Kyle. Let's let's do it. You know, that's a really interesting theory. Uh, talking about seeing those legacy characters actually transfer into the live action. I mean, I definitely, you know, obviously they did a lot of that with the what if characters in the multiverse of madness. And I think honestly, that would be a really interesting idea to take the classic X-Men that we're all familiar with, especially the older group from that amazing series that we got such a long time ago, and to have them actually debut in the MCU. I think that would be really special, and I think that that's a really good idea. So if they haven't thought about that yet, somebody from Marvel ends up watching this video, definitely take Terrence's notes on this. That's a really solid idea, that's for sure. <laughs> Thanks, God. Hey, call me first. Call me. <laughs> Terrence won't make storytelling.com. <laughs> exactly. So speaking of upcoming mcu projects what did you think about the she-hulk trailer wow that she-hulk trailer there were a lot of surprises in that trailer frog man what like that is like see that's and that's just one of the things that about the mcu how it's just growing like so large that like characters like that can still show i mean we already have a talking raccoon the talking tree but just seeing like <laughs> how they're opening wider with these weirder characters and finally seeing jennifer walter she-hulk on the big screen and she i know there's been a lot of memes how she looks like fiona from Shrek, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like when I first saw her, especially off that teaser, when I came off that teaser that they showed during the uh, I think it was the Disney Expo, or they show like the teaser for Moon Knight, and you only see the back of her. I was like, let's let's see it. Tatiana Maslany looks amazing as She Hulk. I, I think the effects are going to be rendered more by the time the show comes out, but definitely, definitely, Chef's Kiss, man. I can't wait. Some Hulk team up action. I think with these Disney Plus shows, I think that they really stand out because they have so many different minds behind these projects. And like they, a lot of those episodes, you know, what from what we've seen with Moon Knight and you know, all the other Disney Plus series, a lot of them really just tell really unique stories. And like they're not afraid to take those creative risks that I think is what makes Marvel such an amazing brand. I'm super pumped to see Jennifer Walters make her MCU debut. And I guarantee you she's going to be a very notable character in the MCU moving forward when she's established, along with Moon Knight and Miss Marvel. I think that those three are going to be some pretty prominent characters. A lot of people, including myself, had a little bit of a frustration with the Hulk character. You know, he's not the typical Hulk that, you know, we're all super familiar with. You know, obviously, if you're an avid comic book reader, Professor Hulk, you know, that's who he is. Do you just have that, like, urge, that desire to see him maybe regress a little bit and you know become his classic angry hulk i know that could potentially happen with world war hulk down the road i feel like he's just kind of like pained right now I don't yeah know. you're not teetering man i i definitely agree even when he was a uh, professor hulk in the comic books it wasn't even that long of a run man but i, I like i like my hulk raging exactly I, hope, I do too definitely. literally what i hope happens in the she hulk show uh i hope there's like you know the arc where bruce banner trains uh, Jennifer Walters on how to use our Hulk-like abilities, but what I really hope that happens at the end of the season, and also I forgot they're going back to the nine-episode format, so it's going to be more like a you know like a sitcom, like a serial kind of thing, which I think is perfect for her time show, like Law and Order kind of thing. I hope it culminates, and we saw uh, Abomination is involved. I hope that he breaks out and it causes something happens and it causes Bruce to like kind of revert and Hulk kind of takes hold and we get raging Hulk versus the abomination. Cause I don't think smart Hulk can do it. Well, okay. He'll probably be smarter and be more, you know, able to fight, you know, and think about what he's fighting, but no, we want to see rematch rage Hulk versus abomination Marvel. Make it happen. 
Wouldn't that be special? I mean, like, honestly, it's the first time in 16 years we're seeing both these characters, at least in the same vicinity. I definitely think they have some pretty big plans for the Abomination. Had him in Shang-Chi. Yeah, he was getting pulled into that prison, but there was some leaked concept art from Shang-Chi, and Deadpool was actually supposed to make his debut in Shang-Chi in that arena. So you said, oh, I think we'd see, we're going to see Deadpool before Secret Wars. I think that would have been really interesting to see him, like, you know, go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Proxima Midnight. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That would be such an interesting nod. And, you know, with Deadpool, he loves breaking the fourth wall. So, like, really, I think he's one of the easiest characters to write into the MCU because, obviously, you know, you, you could say whatever to make him come into the MCU. I mean, I think that he's, like, they have so much creative freedom because he breaks the fourth wall to where they could kind of drop him into anything. I, actually, I, I absolutely agree with that. I think that, like, that's kind of, it's the problem, but it's, like, they're trying to figure out, because you're right, they can put him in so many places. I think they're looking for that perfect spot to put them because yeah they were saying he was going to be in shang chi then they're saying he's going to be in doctor strange and then they pulled that back i think they're waiting for that perfect moment it may be now we may start hearing rumors about thor because i heard some stuff a while back that taika watiti really wanted deadpool to be in thor 4 so or love and thunder going back to she hole he technically already made his mc debut no way home but let's talk about charlie cox's daredevil oh my gosh i am i am so 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 pumped to see this man apparently he's supposed to be wearing the daredevil costume so we'll get like that first look of the mcu version i trust marvel it's gonna have the d's on the chest do you think it's gonna be the yellow one or the red one there's been a lot of reports that in the she hulk series he's going to don his yellow and red suit which should be really interesting i think after no way home she hulk is the perfect place to have him in along with the upcoming echo disney plus series I, mean, I know like there's been talks that the kingpin and charlie cox's daredevil will have a considerable amount of involvement in the echo series but for she hulk i mean it makes sense because matt murdoch's an attorney and so is jennifer walters and obviously they're gonna you know come into contact at some point and like just like they have in the comics i think that they will probably give us that classic yellow and red suit that so many people are familiar with but eventually i feel like he's going to have numerous suits because that's kind of how mcu characters are i mean that's yeah. how they sell merchandise and you know we love to see new costumes that are our favorite superheroes i mean we like yeah. to see those updates and stuff i mean i do there's that big story that broke with matt corman and chris ord set to write and executive produce a disney plus daredevil show like, that is so exciting, in my opinion. It's happening. It's happening. Charlie Cox, along with the rest of the Defenders, I thought that all of them were perfect casting choices. I actually met Mike Coulter at a Comic-Con a couple of years back, and yeah. uh, he expressed interest in, you know, wanting to be involved in the MCU. And I really hope we do see the Defenders at some point, but I feel like they're going to slowly introduce those characters. You know, I think they'll go one of two ways. I think that they'll either do a soft reboot of these characters with the actors playing their, you know, the original characters from the Netflix shows, or they'll have it as the Netflix Netflix series is loose canon because you know Kevin Feige he likes to do his own thing with like his characters and stuff I think that like that Daredevil is supposed to be a continuation of the Netflix Daredevil series oh but okay it, I didn't yeah. read that that's awesome yeah, yeah. but it, so it is going to be like this kind of loose canon kind of thing so yeah Oh, yeah. I wanted to comment on the, the costume thing. So, yeah, I'm so happy that he's going to get that red and yellow costume. I And then I think after that, he's going to go, like, you know, to the all red, you know, with the Ds on the chest that he gets that. Have you seen, like, the metallic Daredevil? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think, uh, oh, that'd be really sick to see him wear. Like, imagine him teaming up with Spider-Man. Oh, and Spider man, Armor. you know what's happening. You know oh, what's yeah. Happening oh, yeah. And they're both oh. wearing, like, these metallic armors fighting, like, Kingpin thugs. Mm. Oh, man. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know that next trilogy with Tom Holland, th that's going to happen. It is. It's not a question of if it will happen, but when. I feel like he was in, in, intentionally introduced in No Way Home to kind of, you know, tease us for what's to come. We're, <laughs> we're completely jumping franchises right now. But, you know, and, you know, Tom Holland's Peter Parker. He's all by himself right now. Essentially doesn't know hardly anybody. The Spider-Man franchise, I, there is just so much, so much potential after No Way Home. I mean, people just, it, it was a dream come true. I mean, the possibilities are endless. I definitely hope they continue the Spider-Verse saga on Sony's end, and along with MCU. I feel like, you know, there's so many opportunities where we can get all three Spider-Man together again. But I really hope that Marvel Studios focuses on the vulnerability of this new Peter. Like, I want to see this evolve 
involves Spider-Man. I want to see, you know, he made his own suit. He is the classic friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I feel like a lot of people initially complained about, you know, Tom Holland's iteration of him not being that classic Spider-Man that we're familiar with. At the end of No Way Home, he has significant loss. And, you know, he's broke and he's alone. And I think that a lot of people are thinking that's for the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man we've come to know. And I really hope that Marvel capitalizes off that. I'm talking way too much. I do apologize. No, no, you're good. You're good, man. Like, it's all it's all fuel, man. But I, I really think, yeah, I agree with that. I think at the end of No Way Home, they really brought Spider-Man back to like a status quo. So I think the next trilogy of Spider-Man movies will be way more grounded. And I like what you said about uh, Matt Murdock and No Way Home, how that being a tease for the characters to come. One of those gripes that a lot of people had about Spider-Man is that he was too tied to the Avengers, you know, and I think now that he has no Stark tech to help him, now he's making his own gadgets and it's like he has to really like not worry about, he doesn't have like a bulletproof suit or anything like right, that. Right, right. He has to, you know, really worry about actual physical danger. I think that's going to be, we're going to see like a raw, we haven't seen this actually in a while, but I want to see like this visual of Spider-Man getting like his ass kicked and his like mask is like torn up and you see like his face and he's just like still fighting like I just that, I, yeah that would be such yeah. a cool thing to see because you know like the previous you know franchises did that you know they had the you know destroyed mask to show you know uh, to make it a more personal scene you know like you know showing peter parker and i think that would be really cool um what do you think about sony's little sinister six kick going on where do you think they're going to do with that are they just you know throwing stuff at the wall seeing what sticks or do you think that they're actually having have a cohesive plan you know there's a lot of debate about that so we have to say nice things right yeah we gotta say nice things yeah okay okay i mean i i uh i don't know i don't know what sony's doing with their sony sony sinister six universe spider-man universe uh, I will say that I am. I'm. I'm excited for Craven. I want to see how that manifests. I want to see how Aaron Taylor Johnson looks in the role. Okay, so like with the Sinister Six plans that they had in store, there was reports that you know obviously they they plan on making a Sinister Six movie, and that apparently they wanted to involve Andrew Garfield Spider Man, but apparently he's taking a break from acting, so I think he passed on that uh, role in the Sinister Six film. And I think their second fallback plan is incorporating incorporating Tom Spider Man. There's also been talks that they're going to incorporate another Spider-Man from the Tasman universe, which I think, you know, we're, we're going with this. It could end up being Miles Morales. And I think that would be kind of a really creative way to introduce him in live action. I mean, like there's, there's, there's so many possibilities with that, but I really hope that Marvel Studios has some creative control with the Miles Morales aspect, because I think Sony sometimes can get in over their head. And I really, you know, they, they did a great job with the end of the Spider-Verse. You know, after Morbius, you know, I, I can't lie, I'm a little bit nervous about how they're going to yeah. handle, you know, such amazing IPs like Miles Morales and, you know, the Sinister Six and whatnot. I don't know. Hopefully Marvel Studios is involved at some point with that. Yeah, I think uh, I think the best route for them to take would be like this, a, a collaboration between the two studios, which they've done with uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man. But I think that the MCU version of Miles Morales should be the Into the Spider-Verse because we saw in Doctor Strange, they went through the animated universe. Yeah, that and would be so cool. That exactly. would be really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just like uh, in Secret Wars 2015, uh, that was how they rolled Miles Morales over from the Ultimate Universe into the 616 prior. So it's kind of like, you know, it's and, and any Marvel movie at this point is basically fair game to come into the MCU. Any way that it manifests from animation to 3D to any way, it can come there. So if we, when we see Miles Morales, it'll be that Into the Spider-Verse version. I think you just dropped a nuclear bomb idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that the end of the Spider-Verse Miles Morales could potentially switch over universes in Secret Wars. That is insane. I mean, that is such a solid theory. Yeah, and we saw that with Professor Xavier and Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, animated series to the live action. That would be really cool. Um, we heard Electro talk about a Black Spider-Man existence somewhere, and I feel like it would be really interesting to see maybe Into the Spider-Verse Mall could jump to different universes, or you know, or, or some way they incorporate that with the Tasman universe. I think that Andrew Garfield would be, I definitely think we're going to see Andrew Garfield back at Spider as Spider-Man at some point. But I think it would be really interesting to see him mentor Miles Morales in live action form and then they could just do whatever the hell they wanted with the him you know transferring to different universes and everything but i don't know i feel like it was not a coincidence that you know jamie fox's electro mentioned you know a black spider-man existing in his universe you know you know maybe they that that's just a loose end that you know never gets explored but I think definitely it would be really interesting to see Miles, uh, Miles Morales from the Tasman universe, or maybe he jumped from the end of the Spider-Verse universe into the Tasman universe, and then eventually 
go to the MCU. I agree, man. Going back to the end of the Spider-Verse, we saw that uh, Miguel O'Hara, 2099, that they have those watches that allow them to jump universes. So it can be as simple as him using something like that. And I'm so glad that you mentioned uh, the Andrew Garfield and Miles Morales crossover, because I actually had a really crazy idea about how Andrew Garfield could come back as Spider-Man. And especially with him being in Miles Morales universe, I would kill Andrew Garfield Spider-Man and, and have Miles Morales take over in his universe. But then I would bring, we, we're, we're doing the clone saga. I would bring Andrew Garfield back as Ben Riley and like dye his hair. So it's like, you still have him. So you still satisfy that story of the death of Spider-Man and it brings in Miles Morales like it does. But then you also, you know, usher in the clone saga in a way that kind of brings back that character that we know his face, but we don't know him. That would be such an interesting dynamic. And then like, you know, we kind of get the best of both worlds that way. Definitely. Yeah. And then you could even like have him also return in Secret Wars with Tobey Maguire. I mean, Absolutely. I'm still crossing my fingers, hoping and praying, maybe get a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 4 at some point, but I don't know. I feel like he's, uh, Sony's really going to have to do a lot of negotiating to get him back. I know Andrew Garfield's a lot more passionate on returning. I definitely think he'll return at some point, but maybe we'll get a Spider-Man 4. You know, Sam Raimi has talked about how much he would love to come back and make another Spider-Man movie. He directly mentioned Kirsten Dunst and Tobey Maguire. And I think Kirsten Dunst has even like said she'd love to be returned, you know, Mary Jane at some point. I feel like Sony is thinking, okay, Tom Holland's Spider-Man is busy in the MCU. We have, you know, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, maybe even Ben Riley at some point, and we have Miles Morales, you know, and like, there's just a lot of stuff they could do with that. Yeah, definitely, man. I think uh, the problem, well, I don't want to say the problem, like you said, I want to put words in, in Toby's mouth, but I think uh, the issue that they're running into that they may have at Sony is finding the story for uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 4, because like you said, he's older. You know, that's why it was easy to, well, not easy, you know, to make that pitch about Andrew Garfield I think like his Spider-Man is still at an age where there's still more storytelling for him uh you know he he's at a point where he can still meet new villains and then for still to have an effect on him growing as Spider-Man but Tobey Maguire I don't think at the point that he is in his Spider-Man career that you can't really introduce any new villains so I think the key to Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 4 to finish out his story as Spider-Man but then yes. to us and Mayday Parker, his daughter, as the Spider Girl. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And there was actually like leaks, something they were going to allude to in No Way Home. Give us a solid closure to Tom McGuire's story arc. I would go as far to say maybe even like take some elements from Logan and like, you know, just give it like that, you know, give the director full creative freedom to do whatever he wants. And then, because obviously he'll, he could be married to Kirsten Dunst's MJ. They could have, you know, Mayday Parker. Like that would be such an interesting aspect and then once his story is concluded they could take mayday parker from you know the Raimi universe and incorporate her into future live action spider-verse she would serve as the homage or the tribute to the Raimi universe along with you know miles morales eventually people will look at him and say he's from the tasm universe you know i, I feel like that would be really interesting to have the next generation of spider-man to you know actually be from those respective universes and i think that that would be opportunity to have miles morales from andrew's universe and mayday parker from toby's and to continue them into live action spider-verse 100 agree with you on that. yes absolutely man i think uh also um yeah, just thinking about that, you are mentioning Mayday alongside Miles. Uh, we could possibly even get some kind of love triangle. Like, we could. We could. I mean, I think the, the possibilities are endless with this. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> We're completely shifting gears here. But let's talk about Wakanda forever. There's a leaked picture of, of Namor, allegedly. And I would love to hear your thoughts on actually Namor potentially serving as the main villain of Wakanda forever. Because there's so much secrecy behind this movie. I mean, there's really a lot of unknowns. Yeah, yeah. So I did see those leaked images. Uh, if we saw the same one, like when it's kind of blurry. You it's can't a little really bit blurry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So what I saw from it, it looks like this is another one of the Mar Marvel taking and Ryan Coogler uh, taking those creative freedoms. Because one thing I was looking for on his suit were the wing tips on his feet. And you see, like, apparently we couldn't see it. Obviously, it wasn't fully rendered. It looked like it was like combining the Atlantean kind of look with Mayan, with Mayan iconography and Mayan oh, design. Man. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't look that deep, but that that's a really solid idea you made there. I have to look at this. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks like in like just Black Panther, another one of those films, like it's hitting so much on like diversity and having like this cultural, like just outreach to, you know, just Marvel just touching every, you know, demographic in the in the world. And I think that's yeah, I'm so ready to see how Namor looks on screen. Tina Cuerta looks amazing. We can't even see his fully rendered abs, but they look awesome. Absolutely, absolutely. All those Marvel actors, they they are literally in pristine shape. And I think, you know, with, with Wakanda Forever, I think I think obviously they will allude to T'Challa dying. My theory is with T'Challa dying, there's going to be a little bit of a power vacuum and Wakanda is going to be temporarily kind of vulnerable, you know, and you have Atlantis coming in causing all this trouble for them. And I think that somebody, you know, potentially Shuri or somebody else, we don't know yet, takes on the role as the new Black Panther. I don't know. I'm really curious to see who they, you know, are we going to have multiple Black Panthers or are we going to have Shuri, you know, serve as like the lead Black Panther? I feel like personally that would be the best way to go. I mean, there's talks of bringing Eric Killmonger back and which would be interesting. I I, I think it would be interesting, but I, I would really, I think it would serve the franchise right if Shuri took on the mantle as the new Black Panther. But that's just my opinion. No, I, I agree. I saw so, uh, before and for before Chadwick Boseman, uh, rest in peace, before he passed, uh, I think that was always the plan for Shuri to take over. So I think now uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more fast track. Um, and I actually think that T'Challa's death will be a really big backdrop for the story. Um, have you read uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates, um, Black Panther, The Intergalactic Empire of Wakanda? I have not, but I've heard that's a really good story. That is on that is on my list to read at some point. So it was this idea. So like Wakanda basically was not a country anymore. It was basically like its own planet. And so the idea of Baas, the Panther God, the Black Panther man mantle wasn't just on one person. It was just, it was it was on multiple people. Like our um, um, Baku was the Black Panther. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah, uh, yes, yes, that's the name I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Mbaku, yeah, yeah. And Killmonger, he uh, became uh, the Golden Jaguar again, but he was combined with the Venom. There was some crazy storyline. But anyways, so I think that for the majority of Black Panther Wakanda forever, Shuri will be the main Black Panther. But I think the end of the movie, like that culminating scene, and I think it will also honor Chadwick Boseman's legacy to how he became the Black superhero for so many kids that love these movies. Absolutely. I think, yeah, I think that it will culminate culminate into Shuri leading uh like all the Wakandas who are all like their own versions of the Black Panther against Namor and his army of Atlanteans. I think like talk about an epic fight scene. And like yeah. I think that you know that's a really beautiful way to put it. We've had multiple Captain Americas, you know. There was another rumor that with um the Captain America 4, multiple Sorry. Captain Americas. I heard that rumor like that might be interesting. You know, maybe you could like I, I don't know. I don't think Bucky is ever gonna be Captain America in the MCU. I could be wrong, but I feel like Sam Wilson is the new definitive Captain America now. And I feel like they're gonna really emphasize him becoming going into that role and like the character development of becoming Captain America. I mean, obviously the Falcon and Winter Soldier touched on that a little bit but he's still like this is a brand new you know mantle he's taken on and it's so much responsibility it's going to be really interesting seeing how they explore him fully assuming the role as the new captain america yeah i definitely agree i think uh sam is here i think a lot of people just like when the comic book came out there was a lot of controversy about there being a black captain america but hey it was very smart to have him become the new captain america bucky at that point in time he was kind of corrupted. He didn't really have full control over himself. And obviously the MCU and the comics don't 100% line up all the time. But I feel like Sam was a lot more suited to become the new Captain America compared to Bucky. Now, after the Falcon and Winter Soldier, he had a lot of clarity eventually. You know, he kind of like was at peace with himself because you know, he was battling a lot of demons from brainwashing, you know, killing so many people. But I feel like Sam Wilson was the perfect choice to take on the mantle as Captain America. I do hope we see Steve Wilson, um, Steve Wilson, uh, Steve Rogers come back. <laughs> at some point it'd be really interesting to see a series or you know a little like one-off of him going back to the quantum realm and delivering the infinity stones like who the hell did he run into did he ever see uh the red skull on you know volmir that was one thing that i had a bone to pick with avengers endgame I, I really wanted to see an interaction between him and the red skull and i feel like that would have been an interesting you know aspect of the story you know they finally see each other after all these years i mean red skull's not in his you know this previous form but you know obviously 
obviously they would recognize each other. Yeah, I think so too. I think we will see uh, both the Captain Americas reunite. And you said something that really just sparked this other theory that I was thinking about like the other day. So have you heard the recent news about Secret Invasion? Uh, the yes. Samuel Action Star show that it's going to take place in the middle? Yeah, in the, the five-year blip. Right, right. So have you read, uh, seen the Earth's Mightiest Heroes Avengers TV show? Yes, I, I have. Yes, I've, it's been a while, but I've definitely seen the oh, yeah. show. Yeah. Do you remember season two? When it was revealed that Captain America was actually a scroll. Yes. I think that Secret Invasion might reveal because how if you think about Endgame, it was Steve, our Steve, went back in time to deliver the Infinity Stones, and then old Steve was right there. What if in Secret Invasion it's revealed to us that our Steve that was in Avengers Endgame, it, he was there between the entire five year gap, that he is actually a scroll and the old man is our Steve. And so Captain America 4 is them trying to root that Captain America out and bring it. Steve back and that's how we see it. We see those two team up. <laughs> this man is an absolute genius when it comes to theories and whatnot. Like I honestly that's one theory that didn't even occur to me. What if? Like you know like that would be wow. Be nuts. <laughs> I guess only time will tell. I definitely we have to do more of these podcasts. This will be the yeah. first of many guys and I mean that. I mean we have so many theories. Like it's absolutely incredible. Well, I wanted to thank you so much for coming on the podcast and you know sharing your two cents about not only the multiverse of madness, but you know, She Hulk and just the future direction where they're going. It's been a pleasure. And please, please subscribe to this upcoming channel. Like, ugh, please subscribe to this channel, uh, Comic Break 98. And he has a lot of good stuff he's working on. And if you're in the St. Louis area, please go check out his art show and, just, and go see his digital comic. Where else can we find you? I could, do you have an Instagram or do you have other forms of social media we can find you besides your YouTube channel? Um, So I keep my social media, well, I, I keep them open for, if, you know, you just happen to find me, but I, I they st they're still kind of personal to me. Just want to lead you guys to my website uh, at terrencewellmakerstorytelling.com. Uh, there you'll see where I'm posting like all of my artwork with my recent stuff, the stuff that I'm working working on currently the stuff that i have worked on the stuff that i will work on and uh yeah that's where you can oh and i'm also doing uh i'm looking for i'm casting for the digital comic book hell and back i am looking for two roles so go ahead and check out my website that's again terrence wellmaker storytelling.com go all the way to the bottom for information on that and uh, if you're interested fill out the form and yeah we'll get going so uh, i want to thank you again noah for having me on here you know we always have such great chemistry you always have a really good time so yeah man can't wait for thank you so much for coming on man it, it's been a blast and we definitely have to do more of these but i just want to reiterate terrence willmaker storytelling.com right that is correct you're phenomenal man thank you so much for coming on the show hey, thank you man